So today we want to create one of the most widely used blending shader technique in game industry. So imagine you have a game which in some part is snowy, in some part is green, and in some part is desert. And you want to your asset blend with each of these environments. One way to do this is to redesign all of your asset for this environment. But better way to do this is to create a shader to do all the work for you. So here we are going to create that shader and this shader is flexible in the sense that it is going to detect the top of your mesh and adjust the blending position. The most simple method for that is to check the normal of the surface of the mesh. And if that is up, then add new environment texture on top of your base texture. And this method is working and in many cases, this method is enough. The second method is to take in account the base normal map of your mesh. This method is more accurate and has more detail. And of course, it needs more processing power. So in this video, we are going to try both of these methods. So I create a small project in Godot, and this is my rock. And my rock currently has an empty shader as you can see. So first, I'm going to define my uniforms. I define my base albedo texture uniform and base normal map texture. For this shader, I'm going to only define only these two uniforms. But you can easily extend this and add roughness, emission, and basically anything else you need to add. And then I'm going to define albedo and normal map uniform for my blending texture. So my base texture is the original texture of my mesh. In this case, it's the rock texture. And my blend texture is texture that is going to add on top of my original texture. So after that, I'm going to set my uniform. I set my rock texture. And for blend texture, for now I add a snow texture. Later you can change the blend texture and put whatever you want. Now I am going to add two UV, one for base texture and one for blend texture, because maybe later I want to scale these textures independently. I define these two uniform as varying, because in this way I can calculate this UV in vertex shader, which is need less processing power, and then pass them to the fragment shader. And basically prefix varying is for this. For now I set both of my UV to original UV. But later, I'm going to change that. Next, I'm going to read from my base and blend texture according to those UVs which I defined. Well done. I hope up to this point, everything was clear. So now we should mix these two texture. But how? Well, here I define a float variable and I call it mask. And I put the value of the mask for now 0.5. And all of this tutorial is about to set the correct amount to this mask. But for now, I just put the value of 0.5 in it. And then I'm going to mix between the base albedo and blend albedo based on our mask. And then I will put the result of this inside output albedo. For now, it show me a color between the color of my rock and the color of my snow, which is not really good. Because in reality, in some part of my mesh, there is a snow. And in other part, there is not a snow. And there is nothing between those. So our mask should be zero or one. And in edges, yeah, only in edges, our mask should change from zero to one in a smooth way. So if you put the value of the mask to zero, it is going to show the texture of my rock. And if you put that to one, it is going to show me the texture of the snow. So everything is working. Now we should mix between two normal map textures. And this is also done. But please note, this is not the best way to mix two normal map. Normal map are vectors. And this is not the best accurate thing to do. There are other methods for mixing normal map which are more accurate. But this method also work. Especially because our mask mostly is 0 or 1. But mixing normal map at the value between 0 and 1 is not accurate with this method. But here it is somehow working. And another important thing is, in many cases, you don't need to mix normal map. For example, in those situations when there is some dirt on top of your rock. In that case, the bumpiness of the dirt is negligible compared to the bumpiness of the rock. And on that case, I suggest to mix only the albedo texture and use rock normal map only. But here, because snow has a thickness to it, I will mix these two normal map. 
Well, now what we should do, we should determine which point on our surface of our mesh is toward up direction and set our mask correctly according to that. In fragment shader, there is a variable which is called normal, which is the normal of the object surface. And Godot usually use the y component of the vector as up direction. So let's try that and see how does it work. Well, it seems that it's working, but actually it is not. The normal which is in fragment function is in view space. So if I want to explain shortly about the spaces, we have local space, which is in the original point of each mesh. In this case, is in the center of my rock. We have global space, which is the center of my world. And we have view space, which camera position and rotation is zero and other meshes are around that camera. I have a plan to make a video about different spaces in shader because it is really, really necessary to learn them and know how to move between these spaces. And maybe at the time you are watching this video, I already made that. So check the video description for that. Okay, so in fragment shader, most inputs are in view space. So let me show that here. Here, if you look at my rock in a different angle, you can see that the snow is moving in different position. And the view space is like this. These are X and Y coordinate, and Z coordinate is in the direction which camera is looking. And this coordinate system is adjust itself when camera moves. So one way to correct this is to multiply this normal to inverse view matrix, and that is going to bring everything from view space toward the space. But I believe this is not an efficient way. And I will tell you why. I believe when you can do some operation in vertex shader instead of fragment shader, it is much better to do that in vertex shader. Because here maybe our rock has thousands of vertex, but it has much more pixels. So if you do this operation in vertex shader, your code is much more optimized. And please note, in fragment shader, everything is view space. But in vertex shader, everything is in local space. So let's create a vector tree varying. I call it V normal. And let's set that to normal of our vertex shader. And if I use the Y component of this vector for my mask, as you can see, this is working. And if I change my view, the snow remain at its original position. But still we have a problem. If I rotate my mesh, the snow will remain at the same position. This is also okay in some situation. When you have some object which you never rotate. For example, you have a table or wall which you never rotate them. But in this case, we may need to rotate our rock and put it in a different position. So what we need to do now is to bring the V normal from local space to world space. And that will solve our problem. The way you normally move from local space to border space is by multiplying the local space to model matrix. So what model matrix do? It is going to rotate and scale our mesh according to the world origin. And then it is going to move my mesh according to the position of my mesh in the world. And this is good if you have some points in the space, like the vertices of our mesh. But here our normals are vectors, which show only the direction not position. So we should rotate them, but we should not move them. So how we can do it? If you look at model matrix, it is a four by four matrix. And these components of our matrix are responsible for rotating and scaling our mesh. And these components are responsible for moving our mesh. So what we are going to do now is create a three by three matrix from these components and then multiply that to our normal. So here I just put my model matrix inside a three by three matrix. And this function is going to automatically grab top left part of my model matrix. And I multiply that to my normal. And that is done. So as you can see, as I rotate my rock, the snow will move automatically on top of my rock. But there is another problem with this matrix. And that is when we scale our mesh, the amount of snow also change on my mesh. As I told you, this part of the matrix is responsible for rotating and scaling our mesh. So this matrix is going to also scale our V normal. 
and we don't want that. So the way you can correct this is by normalizing your V normal. This way you are sure that its length is always one. Okay, this time, if we change the size of my rock, there will be no problem. Now I want to make a small change. As you can see here, I change my model matrix to a 3x3 three three matrix and then I use that. I did that so you can learn the concept of this. But in Godot, there is another matrix which is the same as this and it is called model normal matrix. This matrix also do the same thing. Well now I want to somehow control the amount of snow on top of my mesh. So first I define a float uniform which is called blend amount. And here I'm going to use a smooth step function to have a smooth transition between rock and snow. For the first argument of a smooth step I use blend amount. And for the second argument I use blend amount plus 0.1. And for the last argument, I put mask variable. So what this function does is this. It is going to put all of the value below blend amount to zero, and it is going to put the value above blend amount plus 0.1 to one. And between blend amount and blend amount plus 0.1, it is going to smoothly change between zero and one. Now if I change this 0.1 to 0.2, as you can see, the edge is more soft. You can define another uniform for the second argument of a smooth step function, so you can control this from Godot editor. But I'm going to do it in this way for now. And as you can see, if I change the blend amount, I can control the amount of snow. So next we want to take in account our base normal map to have more detail. But please note, this method also works in a lot of situations. It depends on the art style of your game and this method also needs less processing power. So for taking in account your base normal map, first you should make sure your normal map is imported correctly. This is my imported normal map for my rock. And if I go to the import tab, you can see a section which is written compressed mode. And if this compressed mode is VRAM compressed, a normal map is enabled, this is going to remove the Z component of your normal map for compression reason. Basically, in normal map, you can calculate the Z component by cross product of X and Y component. But we are not going to do that. So make sure you are not using VRAM compress. The other thing is that all normal map texture use this coordinate system. Z is up and X and Y is the ground plane. But Godot coordinate system is like this. Y is up and X and Z is the ground plane. So here I create another vector three variable, which I call it base to normal map. And then I'm going to exchange Z and Y component. So that is done. But still there is another problem because I grab my normal map from a texture the value of x, y, and z are between 0 and 1. Because in image, that is the value that can each pixel have. But normal map is a vector in 3D space. And the component of this vector can have the value between minus 1 and 1. So how we are going to map between 0, 1 to minus 1 and 1? Well, we are going to multiply our normal map to 2 and subtract 1 from it. So we have our true normal map vector. But the question is, in which space is it this vector? Local space, world space, or view space? And the answer is none of them. We have another space which is called tangent space. Let me show you that. So as you know, each of my vertex has a normal which is perpendicular to my mesh. So I define two other vectors which are perpendicular to my normal and parallel to my mesh and I call them tangent and binormal. So in fact, this is the tangent space. And normal map vector is in this space. And interestingly, each point on our mesh has a different tangent space, which is defined by our normal on that point. So how we can move from this space to local space? In another word, how we can calculate the direction of my normal map 
at each point in the local space. So as I read in Godot documentation, I did not see any matrix which is going to do that. I don't know if I could not find it or it not exist at all. So I will create this matrix by myself. If you have tangent, normal, and binormal in local space, just create a three by three matrix, which for the first row has tangent vector, for the second row has normal vector, and for the third row has binormal vector. And this is the matrix that is going to move your normal map from tangent space to local space. I'm not going to explain how this matrix work, but basically this is the way you do that. If you want to learn more about it, you can search for transformation matrix and see the math behind this matrix. Well, I first create another varying for my transformation matrix. And I call this matrix TNP. In vertex function, we have tangent, normal, and binormal in local space. So I create my matrix from these. Now we have our transformation matrix. Now just multiply this matrix to base through normal map. And this will move my base through normal map from tangent space to local space. And now instead of my V normal, I use the Y component of my base through normal map for my mask. And well, we have much more detail. And I can change the blend amount as I wish. But if I turn my mesh, as you can see, the snow will remain in the same position. And that is because my base through normal map is in the local space. But we know how to move from the local space to word space. Just go to the vertex shader and multiply your matrix to model normal matrix. And that's bring my TNB matrix to word space. And please note, you should multiply model normal matrix on left hand side of your matrix. I mean the order here matter. So now if I turn my rock, the snow will remain always on top of it. But what if I scale it? As you can see, scaling the rock changed the amount of the snow on my mesh. You can correct this by normalizing the base through normal. And now if I scale my mesh, as you can see, the amount of snow will not change. What if you want to do this operation in vertex function? So it will be more efficient. So here I delete this. And in the vertex function, I normalize each component of my TNB matrix like this. This will give also the same result. Well, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any question or suggestion, leave in a comment section. Until the next video, bye.